Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. So what I'm going to be showing you today is how you can upload a file to a server and track its progress using just native JavaScript. So without having to lean on any kind of third party package like Axios, which is popular for tracking the progress of an upload. Now, somewhat surprisingly, at the time I'm making this video, there is no way that you can do this using the inbuilt fetch API. But there is a native solution that you can rely upon and that is to construct your HTTP request using the inbuilt XML HTTP request object. But before I do that, I'm going to need to write some JavaScript because I need a file to upload and I also need to update the progress bar and the percentage in the label underneath it. So the file I will be uploading will be chosen by the user using this input element of type file and the user can upload PNG or JPEG and the upload is going to occur when the user clicks on this button below to upload the file. And while this is occurring, the progress bar is going to update. So the progress bar is just a HTML element of type progress and I'm going to update it by manipulating the value of this value attribute here from 0 to 100 as the upload progresses and at the same time I'm going to be updating the percentage progress beneath the progress bar as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is to select some of the elements. I'm going to select the input of type file, the button below it, and also the progress bar. I'm not going to select the label for the progress bar because I'm going to traverse the DOM to be able to select that. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is to select the input file element. So I'll reference that in a variable called file and I'll select that by its ID, which is file. Then I'm going to want to select the button. So I'll reference that in a variable called btn and the ID is upload btn. And then finally, I want to select progress bar. So I'll save that in a variable called progress and I'll select that also by its ID. It has an ID of progress bar. Okay, so now I've selected these elements, the first thing I'm going to want to do is to add an event listener to the upload button so that when it is clicked, the file upload occurs. So I've already selected the button, I want to add an event listener to it, listening out for a click. And in the second argument position, I define a function which will fire when this click occurs. And I'm going to be making my HTTP request inside this handler function. Now, before I make the actual request, I need to create the payload to send. So the payload is going to be the file that the user has selected. And I can select that here in JavaScript by accessing the element. And then there's a list available on that element that will contain the files that the user has selected. Now, the user can only select one file, so it's only going to be a list with one item on it and the item that the user has selected is going to be in position zero. Now, what I'm going to do next is to create a new object. So it's a form data object, which is a special type of object in JavaScript. So the reason I'm creating this new object is because if you append files to it and send the object then as the payload, it's going to set the content type header, it's going to set the encoding, so it's going to simplify the post request that you have to make. So this new form data object that I've created is going to be my payload. So I'm going to save a reference to it in a variable called payload and available on this object is a method called append. And using the append method, I can attach the user image to my new payload. So the first argument you need to specify is a reference name for what you are attaching. So I'm going to call this user image. You can call it anything you want. The second argument is the data that you want to attach. And the third argument is optional. It allows you to specify a file name under which the item will be saved that will override any name that the user has given to it. So I may want the file to be saved under the name userimage.jpg. So if I specify a third argument like this, that is the name under which it will be saved. 
Okay, so now we have our payload formatted as a form data object. We're now ready to make the actual request. Okay, so the way the XML HTTP request object works is that it is an object constructor and to create a new instance of an object of its type, you use the new keyword before it and you also need to call it and then it's going to return an object of its type. So I'm going to save that under a new variable called rec. And now available on rec or whatever you've decided to call this, you have methods available to you to construct a HTTP request. So the first thing you want to do is initialize the request. And the way that you do that is using the open method. And inside here, you need to pass in two bits of information. The first one is the type of request you want to make. So in this case, we're sending data to the server. So it's going to be a post request. And the second bit of information you need to pass in here is the endpoint. So where you want to send the data. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the test endpoint for post requests provided by httpbin.org and that's at forward slash post. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to specify for this request is that I want to listen out for progress on the upload. So the way that I can do that is by accessing an object available on rec called upload and adding an event listener to it. And I'm listening out for an event of type progress. And this is going to fire a function every time there is some progress on the upload. And the way that I can actually access data about the progress is via a parameter that's available. So I'm just going to call that E. So available on this is a property called loaded that tells me how much of the payload has been uploaded so far and also a property called total that specifies the total size of the payload. Now, usually you wouldn't want to specify this in raw terms, but as a percentage. So to calculate a percentage of progress so far, we divide loaded by loaded total. Now, this is going to give a statistic between zero and one, but I want to display a percentage between zero and 100. So I need to multiply the value by 100 and I'll save that value in a variable called percent complete. Okay, so now I've got the percentage complete of the upload. Now what I want to do is update the DOM using this value. Specifically, I want to update the progress bar. So the value of progress bar and also the percentage displayed in the label beneath it. So I already selected the progress bar earlier. Now what I want to do is to change the value attribute on the progress bar. So for that, I can use the set attribute method. So in the first position, I specify the name of the attribute that I want to set. So it's called value. And in the second position, I give the value that I want to update it to. So in this case, it's the percentage complete. Okay, so I also want to update the text inside the label beneath the progress bar. So I want to select that element first of all, and I can do that by traversing from the progress element I've selected to the next element sibling. So what I want to do here is to update the text inside of that label element. So I can do that by setting the inner text and I want to set the inner text to the percentage complete. And I also want to append a percentage symbol after the value. And to make sure that the number displayed is always a whole number, I'm going to round percent complete using math.round. Before firing off this request, we still need to handle the result. So the way that you do that is you add an event listener to the request and you're listening out for a load event. So this is going to occur when the request is complete. When that occurs, the function that you define in the second position is going to fire. And now you can access the result of the request via the rec object. So you have available to you here rec.status. So this is going to give you the status code and you also have rec response which is going to return the response of the request. So I'm going to log both of those to the console so that we can see 
what they are when we send off this request. So all that's left to do now is to send off this request with the payload. So to do that, you use rec.send and you specify the payload in the parentheses. So I'm passing in here payload, which is a reference to the form data object that we created earlier. Okay, so let's check now if everything is working in the browser. Okay, so I'm going to select a file to upload. And when I click upload file, the post request will begin. So let's see if it works. So the progress bar is working. Have a look at the console log. So I get a request of 200 back and it's sending back the image that I sent. So this is what this API does for testing purposes. It mirrors back whatever I sent. So everything seems fine with the request, but the text is not updating here in the label below the progress bar. So given that the request is working okay and the progress bar is updating, it's probably just a selection issue where I've traversed the DOM incorrectly in selecting that element. So let's have a look. I'm selecting the next element sibling after the progress bar element. Let's have a look at the HTML. So there's a line break here. That's what's causing the issue. So I need to select not the next element, but the next next element. So I will add one more next element sibling in there. Now let's test it again. Hopefully it works this time. So you can see now that everything is working fine. The progress bar is updating and so is the text. You notice that the response is coming back with a bit of a delay. That's because this API sends back the file to me and it takes a little bit of time to send the file. Okay, so a little tip here so that you can slow down the progress bar and the text so you can see them in action more clearly is to go to the network tab and add some throttling. And what this is going to do is to simulate a slower internet connection. So I'm going to set this to a fast 3G connection. Now, if I click upload again, I'm going to be able to see the progress of the upload much more clearly now. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.